not good enough. I think it's something we all feel at times as artists. I had a constructive chat with my brother who was visiting recently about this exact topic. He's also a professional artist, so I thought it would make the perfect video topic since this is something that we all have to deal with and it can be pretty hard to shake off if you don't really know why it's happening. And I believe there are five main reasons. So let's get this episode of YouTube Art School started and take a look at what those are. Alright, class is in session, pay attention. Feeling like your art sucks, it's pretty normal. If you thought it was always great, you'd likely see no point in trying to improve, right? But it's a feeling that should definitely come and go. If it's your default state, or if you hate most of your work, I hope this video will help you find out why and help you feel better, maybe. I never really talked about that stuff earlier in my career and I think it's super important. One thing that I've been doing for a few years now that I think contributes massively to me feeling better about my art is to focus on myself. What I mean by that is that I'll hardly look at other people's art anymore, except for the shows, games, animes, and movies that I watch. Basically, that's become my only source of motivation or inspiration. That source of inspiration might be different, of course, for different artists, but the logic was that this stuff is what got me into art in the first place as a kid. It was my original inspiration, as opposed to, let's say, looking on social media for the art of other artists. Because I cut that out almost entirely and it's made a huge difference for my motivation and just how good I feel about my art now. Because I basically only have my old art to compare against. And well, it's pretty easy to beat your old art, way easier than beating everyone else on the internet. Now, it's not to say that I won't look at other people's art ever. I still do, but the distinction is that I do it only when I'm trying to learn or get better at something specific. Make sense? If I just feel like drawing to have fun, my inspiration will be the art that I did previously and, you know, whatever shows that I'm watching. That's it. I'm not looking at a bunch of art gods online first, you know, gambling on whether I'll feel motivated or feel crushed by the gap in skills. I just gotta beat myself. And that's way easier, way more likely that I actually will. The key is to limit, like slash eliminate the occasions where I can feel discouraged. And you should try it. I've been feeling so good about my art lately, and it's all thanks to that, I think. Focus on you. But that's just one important thing out of five. It's a good start, but the next one might be even more important. When you feel like you're not improving compared to your old art, it's real hard to feel happy about the work. We need to feel like things are improving in life, otherwise we stop doing them. No point doing something when there's no result, or barely any. So what can you do to feel like things are progressing faster? especially if you don't have a lot of time in a day to dedicate to art. Well, you have to specialize, to focus on one, two, or three areas that you're trying to develop, but no more than that. At least that's what I do, and it helps make those few things feel like they're improving much faster as a result. Well, they are, since I'm not spread too thin working on a bunch of other different things instead. Like if you've been subscribed for a while, like a long while, you've probably saw my speed painting arc many years ago, then my anatomy arc when I was working on my art program. Then at the start of COVID, I started to work more on line art since that was a big weakness for me. And now like two or three years later that I feel like it's turned into a strength, I've been focusing on more dynamic posing for my characters, which was also a weakness before. The idea is just to put all your eggs into one or just a few baskets, you know, rather than many. I think you'll feel a lot happier about yourself when you can notice that improvement. I sure do. Of course, it helps to know how to study and what to practice in order to get better faster. So if you're looking for the best art education money can buy, more than 24,000 other students have already joined us in my art school program and our school's private discord. And you can find all the info about it with the link in the video description. Check it out. I'm extending the biggest sale of the year so far until the end of the month to celebrate passing over 24,000 registered students. Another crazy milestone. Art School is literally the most popular art education program in the world, so you should check it out with the link below. It should answer all your questions, but if not, don't hesitate to drop me a DM from my QBrush store. Now, there are three more issues that will almost guarantee us you'll feel bad about your art, so let's quickly go over those to make sure that you know what to do to avoid them. The next one will be the actual Time it takes you to finish a piece. Slow work is the worst for confidence, especially if you're often comparing yourself to others online who mention like, you know, they spend four hours on a painting 
where it might take you 40 to do something that's not even as good. There is a science to drawing faster and you can really speed up your process if you know about it. And here is the short version. So first, follow a method, follow a recipe. I teach a lot of different ones on the channel for different topics. For example, if you're slow at coloring your drawings, follow one of my coloring guides and stick to it. Follow the same process each time you color something until you know it by heart. And just the fact that you're following one should significantly speed up your work. Second, try staying in your comfort zone more than you typically do. Some people never really venture out and keep doing the same thing over and over, but it's hard to improve when you do that. The opposite is also not good, where you're always struggling doing things that you don't know yet how to do well. The balance that I recommend is to stay like 80% in your comfort zone and only 20% reserved for experimenting or pushing your limits. The struggle is what eats up time. So if you struggle less, you go faster. Easy. The last thing I want to add about speed is to use more references when you draw. Instead of trying different random things until one kind of sticks, save time by using references for the things that you don't quite know how to draw yet. Basic stuff, but often forgotten. So all of that should help you draw a lot faster and feel a lot happier about your work as a result, hopefully. And even if the drawing ends up sucking, at least you won't have spent too long on it so it doesn't hurt as bad, right? <laughs> Genius. And this brings me to the fourth issue affecting how you feel about your art, maybe. And it's when the result disappoints you, you know, after spending hours on it. This still happens to me, by the way, after drawing for well over 30 years, so no one is immune. But a great tip that I use to ensure that I'm rarely disappointed in myself is to limit the scope of the work going into it. I've learned this from mentoring hundreds of students and the pattern was always the same. The student would aim for a grand painting, something super elaborate, and then grind on it for days, weeks maybe, and either lose motivation along the way or just get to the end and feel like the result doesn't quite warrant all the time they invested into it. It can be a pretty crushing defeat if you don't have a lot of experience, especially if this happens like over and over again. Instead, I recommend aiming for something that feels relatively easy for you, nothing more. Let's say I start drawing a character like this one. You know, I simply went into it wanting to draw a dynamic pose. If that had sucked, I would have moved on to something else. No big deal. But since I liked it, though, my goal got bigger. I wanted to turn that into a cool line drawing. Then then once I got there, the goal moved again to coloring it, which is what I ended up with here. The main difference is that I didn't start this drawing thinking that I would color it. You know, that's the distinction. If I go further with it, it's all bonus stuff. Rather than being a negative, if I told myself that I'd do it from the start and then fail to do it. It's the big difference. And the last one is going to be quick, yet very important. Often we'll feel bad about our art if we feel like our ideas suck. And I think it's good to remind ourselves that creativity is a skill itself. But unlike like riding a bicycle, you can lose it pretty quickly if you don't use it. In that sense, it's maybe better compared to like a fire. It takes work to start a fire without, you know, modern tools, which is just like creativity. It takes work to get it started. I personally do what I mentioned in the first chapter. Like I watch a lot of shows, movies, animes, play games, etc. And then I'll draw some fan art and then I'll start to come up with my own designs after that. That's what helps me get inspired. That's what starts my fire. Once it's started, you see the more you draw, the easier the ideas come to you. It's like you're making hybrid ideas in your mind from all the other ideas you had before. Kind of like your ideas are having babies. What? Again, it's just like, you know, a fire that's easy to keep going once you started by adding some wood here and there. And like I said, though, if you stop drawing for a while, the fire goes out and then you have to build up your creativity from scratch again. Understanding how that works took me some time. So hopefully that helps if you hadn't yet. If you feel like you're not creative enough, you're just in the starting the fire phase. Once you get it started, you'll see it gets a lot easier to stay inspired. So keep all of that in mind and then maybe work on some of these things if you feel like it might help. And I think you'll start to feel a lot better about your art, hopefully helping you feel happy each time you finish a piece because it's the very best you could do at that time. I practice what I preach and all of this has helped me immensely over the years. So I hope the same goes for you. If it does help, you know, please let me know in the comments or drop your own tips down there too if you feel like I missed something important. And finally, you can go and grab my world famous brush set for absolutely free with a link in the video description as a prize for staying until the end of the class and being a good student. All right, next week's video will be a new style study class. So keep an eye out for that. Meanwhile, check out these other video recommendations YouTube thinks you'll love.